So in this video, we're going to jump into some advanced poker bluffs. It's going to be three spots as usual. And the two things these spots has in common is that it's going to be against really good players and it's going to be a really under bluff spots. Let's jump into it, guys. All right. So in this spot, Steven had Queen Jack suited a cutoff with uh, 43 big blinds. The super min raises with 67 blinds. Steven flats. The bottom flat, he had 27 blinds, and the big blind defended, and he was short. He had a total of 9 blinds behind here. The flop comes king, king, 7, rainbow. Four way. We have no backdrop flush draw. So, it goes check to you. You bet 1.4 here in 9.6. First of all, why, why the bet here with queen jack high no backdrop flush draw? Yeah, and as you also see here, uh, this is a really small size. I went 15% here with Queen Jack suited, no backdoor. And you might, might ask yourself, don't you want to have more equity? And why do you bet so small? What do I accomplish here? Yeah, a lot of these questions, right? So I do have a lot of 15% sizings here when it's four way. And the reason why is because I really think when it's four way that we can put a lot of hands into a tough spot here. Imagine if the button has like pocket sixes or something. It's really tough for him because he has two players behind. And keep in mind, the low jack is probably uncapped. It's probably checking range here. Even if he has like king queen in the low jack, he's probably checking as well to check range sometimes. So I decided to go for a small bet here with queen jack suited. And the main reason why I went for a small bet with queen jack suited is because I'm focusing mostly on the button's range because he has the tightest range of all. So I was thinking that I block some suited king axes like king queen and king jack suited. And since the button has a really tight range here, I think blocking these combos is really important because I can also bank on the fact that I have a tight range as well. I'm going to also have king queen offsuit and king jack here. And if I had a king here, I would go small as well just to uh, increase the possibility for a check raise or increase the possibility for people to call with worse. I decided to pick queen jack suited uh, with no backdoor here as a small bet on the flop. So the button he raises to 5.4 blinds with 20.3 behind. Both the big blind and the PFR folds. So the action is back to you. Now, having queen jack high with no backdoor, what's your game plan now? Yeah, so uh, right now I'm thinking that, okay, so I block king queen suited and I block king jack suited. All right, but I have no backdoor. I have really low equity here. So of course I can't perceive here with a call. But another thing that's really important and a good concept to think about is what's his bluffs here? Do I block any bluffs? Do I just block value here? Yes, I do just block value and I don't block any bluffs here. Because what's a good bluff here? Imagine him having queen jack suited with a backdoor. Imagine him having jack ten suited, queen unsuited, those type of hands with a backdoor. It's a really attractive spot for a rag to raise these hands. And the reason why it's attractive because he understands that trips is going to be a bigger part of his range, flatting really tight here on the bottom. And then he understands that, ah, Let's raise my queen jack suit here with a backdoor because I blocked some strong king axes he can have. And I bet so small. So he's probably going to find more of these bluffs against a small sizing here. So this is an unblock suited queen axes and jack axes that he can pick as a bluff. And I block some king axes. I decided to go for a click here. I see. 9.4 is the click here. And it works. He folds. And I'm also thinking that if you don't have a king here, there's nothing he can do. If he has queen jack suited, jack 10, queen 9 suited with a backdoor, yeah, he's not deep enough here to continue with the call. He just have to fold. There's nothing he can do. So even though it's a really small size, it does not have to work often. And that's the main key here. We unblock his bluffs and it's nothing he can do. He just have to fold. He can't float anything. So if he calls here, he probably always has a king. So in this spot, the button min races. Steven has pocket 8s in the big blind and goes to 10.5. First of all, I want to ask, why the sizing 10.5? The sizing is 10.5 because our range is really polarized here, which means we pick some garbage and we pick some really strong hands. So then DTO did learn me that going with a bigger size when your range is very polarized is the correct thing to do. So how does my range look here? I can pick a hand like king deuce to king four offsuit here. The same with like ace deuce, ace three, those offsuit combos there. I can pick some trash like, you know, 
some queen four offsuit or something, you know. And this always are picking a lot of these hands. You want to have a high card that blocks this continuing range. And you want to have a really low card. Because a really low card is going to not interact with this folding range. So the flop comes king 10 4 with two spade, and we have the eight of spade here. If we go for a bet here, what is the sizing we choose? Yeah, we surely have a big advantage if we have ace king and he don't. Uh, I think in this spot here, we want to go for the small sizing here, one third very often, if we decide to bet here. In game, I thought I wouldn't accomplish that much by betting eights here, because he's still probably calling nines, and he's still calling ace queen and ace jack double fans. So I decided to put eights into a check range here. So after check check, the turn card comes. I'll jack two flushers now. This must for sure be a good card for our range. We as we have like ace queen here. Do we go for bet now? Yeah, so I was thinking in game that even though we could have ace queen, even though we could have pocket jacks, he can have those hands as well. And I think it's very likely that he's gonna have those hands because it's more likely that we bet ace queen and ace jack on the flop here. Because we can fold out the hand like pocket sevens very often, I think. I think it's more likely he's gonna have ace queen and ace sack because if he has those hands, he's probably checking back on the flop very, very often. And as I said, if you see that those ace queen and ace sack very often, then he's gonna have the advantage here, right? So I decided that screw it. We have eights. I'm just check folding. He can still have ace queen here. Let's go for check. And he checks back. The river card is a queen, giving the board a one-liner. And you mentioned uh, B-flop that you do have a lot of garbage a sectors here. So we must have a lot of straights now, right? Yeah, for sure a good point that we have a lot of a sectors. But the thing is, I'm C-betting all of them. If I had ace-2 soft-suit, I would C-bet here on uh, King 10x. It's just such a good board for us. And with the ace in my hand, yes, I can certainly fold out better hands. And I can clean out some better ace axes if I had ace two offsuit, for example. If he had ace nine suited with no backdoor, yeah, he would just fold. So I would I would probably see that a lot of ace axes on the flop. And if I didn't see that some of them, yes, I would probably bet to turn with them a lot as well. So I don't really have many ace axes. I can surely have some, but it's very, very few. And it's very hard for me to have a, a straight right now. Of course, I can still have pocket nines and I can have some ace axes, but it's very few. I decided to go for a check here because so I'm not going to fold out nines if I bet now because that's a straight. And I decided that, yeah, I'm just going to check and hope that I check back sevens or sixes. Not going to happen that often, but uh, I were banking on the fact that maybe he would. So after checking to the button, he bets 11.5 in 22.4 and you have 40 blinds. So I just, you just give up then and fold the river. Yeah, this is a really interesting spot because the ranges are so tight here coming to the river. Yeah, you might think to yourself that how can I wrap an ace here? But thinking about my range here, how can I have bluffs as well? Like if I had like one combo with ace axe here, right? I would always go for a race on the river. So my thought process on the river is that the hand that should stick out the most for my villain here is pocket queens. Because I will always play queens like this. I might block bet the river, but I don't think I would get called by any worse hand. So I would probably check queens as well on the river. And of course, I can still have pocket kings, which I would probably play like this as well. And then from my perspective here, the hand that would stick out the most that I think villain is going to show up with is pocket nines or 10 nines suited. Because I was thinking that he's not going to have many ace axes himself either after checking the flop and checking the turn. It would be very hard for him to check many ace axes, especially the weaker ones, when he knows he can have ace queen on the turn. And then it's really hard for him to just check that check back turn with a, with an ace, right? So I were thinking on the river, if if I were him, I would value that pocket nine so ten nine suited, which is always gonna come to the river play like this. And of course he could bluff sevens and sixes, but I'm, I can't bank on the fact that He's always going to bluff those and call eights, which doesn't sound good at all. So I was thinking that if he has pocket nines, if he has 10 unsuited, if he has sevens, if he has sixes, he's probably always betting these hands on the river. So I decided to do something fancy here. All right. And you decided to go for a clicker to 23 big blinds, leaving you with 
17 blinds behind. Yeah, so for sure an interesting play, guys. But think about my range here. How can I bluff here? How can I find bluffs in this line, right? So I'm really banking on the fact that my opponent is never going to call here with 9s or 10-9 suited, for example. And of course, sometimes I'm going to run into an ace. But keep in mind, this play does not have to work often. It's just a click. It's so cheap here. So yeah, I decided to do something fancy here. And just hoping that he understands that it's really hard for me to bluff. And if I had an ace here, I would always go for a click because there's no reason to just shove all in there. And he ended up folding. Okay, it's good. So in this spot, Steven had 10 8 off suits in a small one with 30 blinds. We done 26. Steven limps. And we done checks. The flops come king, queen, three, rainbow. What is your immediate thought process here with 10 8 high? Yeah, so after doing a lot of DTO drills, blind versus blind, an uh, important concept I learned is that it's really important to think about can we fold out better or get called by worse? Because we have so many hands to choose from. Both ranges are really wide here. So my particular combo here, 10 8 offsuit, can we fold out better? Can we get called by worse? We don't gonna fold out 10 9, which is a better 10 than us because that has a gutter right now. A size never folding and jack eyes probably gonna call a lot as well if we stab this flop so that's why i decided my combo we want to check all right and it actually goes check check here so what type of hands would he check back here yeah so this is a reg in the big blind so he's probably thinking pretty similar thought process as me that if he has jack higher if he has ace higher it doesn't really accomplish much by betting these hands so i think majority of his range is gonna be jack high and ace high all right, so after check check, the turn card is a jack or two spade now, you have none. Do we accomplish anything by betting after check check here? I'm just focusing on majority of range here. As I said, majority of his range is going to be ace eye and jack eye. Of course, it's going to have other hands as well, but to simplify in these spots where the ranges are so wide, let's just focus on majority of range. So when I think it's going to have a lot of ace eye and jack eye checking back the flop, these hands are for sure never falling now because jack eye on the flop has a pair of jacks now. Ace eye have a gutter and of course an easy call if I bet. So I didn't think I accomplished much. I went for a check again. All right. And now the big blind pots. What type of hands would he pot with now? Yeah, so very interesting sizing. I did not expect a pot bet here. The reason why I didn't expect it is because um, I didn't think he would check back king axis on the flop. I did not expect him to bet pot with like a queen now either. It's fairly reasonable for him to have some queen axis in a pot bet. And it's also fairly reasonable to him for him to turn some two pairs with like jack three, queen jack. So after check check on the flop, I was thinking about going for a check race if he decided to bet like a smaller size. And the reason why is because he might protection bet a jack now and he can still have a queen. And of course, if he bets a three now, unlike ace three, it's going to be pretty tough for him if he faces a check race. But when he decided to bomb here, I don't think I'm going to check race many hands at all. I mean, even if I had ace 10 now or 10 9 now, I would just go for a call here because when he bets so big on the turn, I won't imagine him checking back many rivers. I would just imagine him bombing the river as well. The big question now is, can I call 10-8 high? It yeah, does uh, suit matters here? You have no spades. I actually think it matters. But because when we have no spades here, it's fairly reasonable for him to have a hand like 10-7 of spades here, or like 8-9 of spades, which is certainly to check back on the flop because you have a backdoor flush draw. And I think a reg would uh, certainly have these as a bet and give up on the river very often as well. Because a reg understands that bluffing 10-7 of spades here on the river is a pretty bad combo to have because you don't want to have two spades in your hand bluffing on the offset deuce on the river because then you interact a lot with the folding range. So I'm really banking on the fact that he understands this concept and then I can get call call on the turn and hope check check on the river and I beat like 10-5 of spades or something. But we still have an open ender and we could have the best hand. I decided to go for a call. And the river card is a deuce. No flush got in. What is 9 now? And he has 23. So you have 10 hide. Do you like go for a lead here on the river? He bets so big on a turn, so it's really saying that he has a, a really strong hand or he has air himself. So if he has air and he goes check check, maybe we win. As I said, he can have a busted flush draw. That's worse than 10 high. Small chance, but 
there is a chance that we can win this hand if it's good check check and leading here makes no sense because yeah the fact that he so polarized himself here that's why i decided to go for a check the big blind he bets four and a half here in nine half pot leaving with 18.9 blinds would you also consider uh, calling here with uh, 10 hikes he since you mentioned that you could uh have like miss flush draw with uh nine eight suitor for example beat that yeah it's a good question but going half pot here i did not feel like he's gonna put many bluffs into a half pot size on the river i check all the turn here i'm gonna have something and if he wants to put like my queen axes or jack axes in a really tough spot here is he doing it that with a half pot probably not for me it really sounds like you have some sort of king that he checks back the flop with or maybe some sort of queen or maybe he's gonna have two pair here he's going like really milky with the sizing here just expecting me to have a weak range and hoping that a hero calls but i had other plans here i had other plans for the reason that i said on the turn that because he bet so big i would certainly just call ace 10 and 10 9 because i expected him to bet the river so if I still have those hands in my range, why not pick this hand as a check race, right? Okay, so what um, sizing do we go here for a check race on the river when he has 18 blinds behind? I think we're really going to say that we have 10-9 or ace 10 when we go all in here. And when we wrap so strong range, we have to go all in here. We really want to put his queen jack, for example, in a really tough spot here. And it's not going to be easy for him to hero call in this spot if he has two pair even. And the reason why it's really hard for him to call with two pair here is that it is really hard for me to pull a lot of bluffs here in this spot. I'm not going to have like eight high or something. I'm not going to have like nine high or something. And the reason why is because I went for a check call on the turn. So my range looks like a pair or like a high. And maybe some 10 highs, but I don't think he expects me to show up with 10 high here and check shoving the river. I think he expects me to have showdown value and bluffing with showdown value. That is a rare thing to do on the rivers, especially as a check race all in. So our banking on the fact that this is a reg and for him to find bluffs here in a spot where I have showdown value, check racing all in. Yeah. I think this is a spot that's so underbluffed that he's going to really struggle to hero call me here. Yeah, so you did go all in here and uh, he folded. The 10 high is good. He did go into the time bank a while here before folding. So I'm pretty sure he had a really good hand, but he probably understood that this is a spot where people are not going to bluff enough. You're such a genius, Steven. But anyways, like and subscribe because we're going to post some more on YouTube. Catch us live over at twitch.tv at blindguy789. Peace!